In this video, we'll discuss the sorted list collection. The sorted list collection is a lot like all the other iDictionary collections, except that it's a marriage between an iDictionary and an iList collection. In other words, you'll be able to use the key value pairs like you're used to from iDictionary, but you're also going to be able to use the index like you're accustomed to with the iList interface. So what I've done was created a simple console application in Visual Basic and created a new instance of our sorted list object called cars. And then I start adding items using the add method to the car collection. I add a key and a value. Keep in mind that our value can be any object that we want it to be. In this case, it's a simple string, but it, like we did in previous videos, we could have created a car object, populated its uh, properties, and then added it to the collection. So that's just something we could have done, but chose to keep it simple in this case. Now I start taking a look at the, diff the things that differentiate the sort of list collection from the other types of collections that we've used in the past. And as we noted, since it's a marriage of the iDictionary and the iList, we're going to find some unique methods that will allow us to kind of bridge the gap between the two. Sorry about that. For example, this index of key method, if you pass in the name of the key, it will give you back the numeric index that you would normally see in the iList collection, the numerical index of that item. So in this case, we're passing in third. Guess what it would turn back? 0, 1, 2, or 3. Well, this would be 0, this would be 1, and this would be 2. So actually, our third key returns back an index of 2. Now, we can also, as I illustrate here, use this uh, collection just like we do in the other iDictionary uh, collections. So when I pass in a key name, it'll return back the value of that entry, that dictionary entry. So in this case, the value of the third should come back to be Plymouth Grand Voyager. Just like the iList collections, you can get a count and a capacity, and these are two different things. The capacity says this is how many items we're able to accommodate without having to expand the size of the collection, and the count tells you how many are currently in there. So you can also trim the capacity down to match the count if you want to conserve on space. And I'd refer you to the other uh, iList collection videos in order to show you how to do that. Then what I've done here is created two simple loops. One of the loops accentuates using key values in order to loop through the items and get the values and, and print them to the console window. The other loop uses purely indexes to do that. Now, in the case of the key values, we rely on the getKey method twice. In the first case, the getKey method passing in the index 0, 1, or 2 will return back to us a string that will either say, as we can see up here, first, second, or third. Then what we do is we use this method where we're able to pass in the key name, first, second, or third, pass that into the cars collection, and it should return back to us the value. So that's one way to iterate through uh, the values within our collection only using key and value uh, the style. The next way is using indexes. And in this case, uh, we loop through 0, 1, 2 again. And I use the get key list, which returns back an array of key items, and then just simply reference the first or the second or third item in that collection to return back the name of the key. And then we use this get by index on the cars collection in order and pass it in um, 0, 1, or 2. And that will get us back the value. So this is another way, again, that it, it duplicates the iList interface by being able to just pass in an index and grab the value out, just like we were able to just pass in the, uh, the key value and get the value back. So let's go ahead and set a breakpoint here at n sub and then run this. And then bring up our console window. Now we said the index of key third was 2. and that the value of third was uh, Plymouth Grand Voyager. So that looks right. The next thing to notice is kind of interesting. The car count, we only have three, but it defaults to a capacity of 16, something else that's kind of interesting. 
And then notice that our results are identical whether we loop through using the key value method or the index method. So the sort of list is another tool to have in your arsenal. It, uh, it allows you to have kind of the best of both worlds between the iDictionary and the iList. Now I will say this, that if you're going to support those extra interfaces, especially in very large uh, capacity collections, um, you're going to pay a price for that, a performance penalty. So you have to decide if the, the performance penalty, if you have tens of thousands of items in a collection, maybe you're better served using a hash table and just kind of uh, getting around the fact that you can only use the key value pairs or just use an array and get around the fact that you can only use indexes. But if you need both and the collection's small and you're not worried about performance per se, then this is a good option for you. So I hope you learned a little bit more about the sort of list collection. Thanks.